Here we have the female ovary model. If we come over here, we see one of the ligaments that helps hold the ovary in place. This would represent the ovarian ligament. You can see the ovarian vein along with the ovarian artery there in red. Ovarian vein, ovarian artery. We have our germinal epithelium coming right along the outer margin there of the ovary. So we've got our germinal epithelium. You'll see that the ovary has oocytes or gametes in various stages of development throughout. We'll begin with the primordial follicles, primordial referring to before life. So you see a small collection of primordial follicles here, along with a small collection of them over here as well. Primordial follicles try to become primary follicles. Primary follicles usually can be easily identified on the model by looking for the singular layer of granulosa cells around them. So this is a primary follicle. Primary follicles should next, next take the next step of development and become secondary follicles. If you look really closely, there appears to be roughly two layers of granulosa cells, two being secondary. So that's how I usually relate that I'm looking at a secondary follicle here. Secondary follicles try to become mature or graphene follicles. This is a mature graphene follicle normally indicated by its large antrum, which is a space on the inside, which fills with fluid. As the fluid accumulates, it puts pressure on the secondary oocyte, ultimately, hopefully leading to ovulation. So in completion, this would be a rupturing graphene follicle or a rupturing mature follicle. Not all follicles make it, so those that don't ultimately mature and rupture may begin to die. This is a dying or a tretic follicle here. Notice the difference between the nucleus, which is well-defined in the primary and the secondary follicle, but notice how the nucleus appears to be degenerating in the dying follicle. Once this mature follicle ruptures, it will bleed slightly and continue as a corpus hemorrhagicum. The corpus hemorrhagicum will eventually allow for the blood to clot, and once that blood clots, it becomes a corpus luteum. Corpus luteum means yellow body, and you can see they've depicted it as yellow here. Ultimately, the corpus luteum will die and be atrophy and become a corpus albicans. So you see a corpus albicans here, there's another there, and also another here. These might be the result of some of the larger, mature follicles that did not rupture, or they could be the result of a mature follicle that has ruptured. But it's essentially scar tissue, the corpus albicans, that is, that ultimately will be reabsorbed back into the ovary.